Thank you very much. We spray our pastures, I'm going to say quite a bit and let you decide how much that is. I don't want to live on a tractor spraying anything. I'd much rather get by without it because it takes time, it takes diesel fuel, and it takes money to spray. The best way to get good grass, I think, is to move your cattle in an appropriate manner and the grass will come on. But what we found a few years ago is that by spraying raw milk, you can really get a tremendous boost in your grass production. And what we, what we learned from this raw milk is that it, it helped our grazing in that it gave us more grass and so we were able to graze better and that we can knock the grass to the ground, uh, cover our soil, give the microbes more to eat, and so on. I, I think our grass is considerably better since we started spraying. Uh, and, and the first time we sprayed was in May of 2010. Uh, having said that, we didn't spray at all this year until September. We probably wouldn't have sprayed any had, had we not had a terrible drought. The drought, you know, as I'm sure most of you experienced it also, it devastated our grass and we thought, well, we'd try to give our grass a little bit of a boost. And I'll show you a picture. I, we've never had better looking grass than we've got right now. Now, we don't have as much of it as I'd like. And it's not as good in, in the sense of the bricks level, the sugar content. But it sure looks good. It's, it looks so good you'd want to cut it and put it on your salad. But we'll show you a picture of that later. Uh, the young man here operating the PowerPoint is Brandon Meebler. He's a young man from our county. He gets his master's degree in, a, in a, less than 30 days from Lincoln University. He's helped us for a year and a half, does a great job. Um, Brandon does a lot of the spray, and he does all of the work on the PowerPoint. Uh, I can, believe it or not, I can barely turn on a television. I am technologically challenged from the word go. But anyway, we've got some slides to show you today that I think you'll find interesting. The first thing we're going to show you is the uh, the sprayer that we use to spray raw milk and the other products that we put on our field. This is Brandon, and uh, this is a, a Nissan sprayer. They're sold in uh, Nebraska, I believe, is where they're manufactured. Uh, this will actually cover an 80 to 100 foot swath on a, on a, uh, on a good day with, without much wind. One reason we did not do much spraying earlier in the year is we had so much wind, it was unbelievable. You just, you just couldn't control the, uh, the material you were spraying. Uh, but 80 to 100 feet, you get over a field pretty fast. And uh, you're moving at about five and a half to six miles an hour. Uh, everything's calibrated for that. This sprayer only puts on four gallons per acre of, of liquid. So you don't have a lot of liquid to put on. Most boom sprayers have what they call 20 gallon nozzles. So you're putting 20 gallons of liquid on your field. If you're putting on two gallons of milk and that's all, then you've got 18 gallons of water hitting your field as well. If you want to add some molasses, put a half a gallon of molasses per acre and you're going to cover 10 acres, then you've got you know, you've got five gallons of molasses in your tank and so on. But anyway, um, this sprayer is great for getting over fields in a hurry. The, the, uh, the, the drawback to it is if you've got much wind, it's, it's, it's really not nearly as good as the boom sprayer. And you don't put quite as much liquid on your soil, which I think is probably a plus. Uh, I will show you the first thing we did when we sprayed, and this would have been about two and a half years ago, in uh, May of 2010. Let's hit that second slide. This is a field that we call the apple orchard. Uh, you can see in the bottom left-hand corner a, a, a water hydrant. 
there's another one down at the end of the red line, and that pretty well divides the field in half. What we did, we drove to the right of the hydrants and hit everything on the left side of that with raw milk. Two gallons of raw milk per acre, nothing else. No sea salt, no molasses, no nothing. Just raw milk. 28 days later, we hosted a field day. And a gentleman by the name of Terry Goppert, who's a very, very, who, who, I should say, who was a very, very well-known uh, extension agent from Nebraska, came and he could see what was going on. He could look at that field and say, oh my goodness, you got a lot of results. I couldn't see it. But he actually then went out and measured. And where we had sprayed the milk, we had an extra 700 pounds of grass on a dry matter basis in uh, 28 days. In, in less than 30 days, we had 700 pounds of grass. And th the most amazing thing of all is the reduction in compaction. Where we spray the milk, it took 100 pounds of pressure per square inch to put a penetrometer in the ground. For those of you who don't know what a penetrometer is, it's a 28, I'm sorry, 26, I was right the first time, 28 inch steel rod and it's the, the, the modern ones have dials on them so you know exactly how much pressure you're applying to get into the ground. Well, the one we had from University of Nebraska showed pounds per square inch, and where we spray the milk, it took 100 pounds. To the right of the line that you saw a moment ago, it took 300 pounds of pressure to put that penetrometer into the ground. As I told you, I'm technologically challenged. I couldn't operate the thing and look at all the bells and whistles that told me the pounds per square inch. But all you had to do was take it and stick it in the ground, and where you would spray the milk, it just went right in. Where you didn't, you had to really put a lot of weight on it. So there's no, com no comparison uh, between the, the soil that was sprayed with the milk and that that did not get sprayed with milk. In Nebraska, they ran a test similar to the one that I conducted uh, two and a half years ago, but they did theirs in 2004. They sprayed two, five, 10, and 20 gallons of raw milk per acre. What they learned was two gallons per acre does just as much good as 20 gallons an acre. You're just wasting 18 gallons of milk per acre if you choose to put 20 on. The, uh, in Nebraska, they waited 45 days before they measured their grass, and in 45 days, they got 1,200 pounds of growth per acre. I think that's probably consistent with what we had. because I told you at 28 days, we had the 700 pounds, but I went back to that same field about two and a half weeks later, and you could see where we sprayed the milk was at least six or eight inches taller than where we didn't spray the milk. So I'm, I'm thinking we clearly had more growth than we did 30 days, 15 days before that. Um, as the summer wore on, you could clearly see where we had sprayed the milk. Tremendous weed control. Uh, I told this to one guy, he said, are you, are you comparing milk to a herbicide? I said, no, no, it's not that at all. What we think is happening, and nobody really knows, you're, you're feeding the microbes, and the grass is growing thicker and better, and it's just choking out the weeds. The weeds can't compete with the with the, uh, the grass that's growing in the soil that you sprayed with, uh, with milk. We also learned that your bricks level, that's the sugar content of the grass, went up. Where we sprayed milk, we found that, uh, in, in this was in summer of 2010, uh, June, July, and August, we were measuring where we sprayed the milk, and normally the, the bricks level or the sugar content of the grass was about three points higher. Whatever it was, it didn't matter. Whether you're talking Johnson grass, fescue, archer grass, clover, the, the comparable grass where you sprayed the milk was about three points higher. 